that's definitely at least one, maybe two sturgeon right there. here or no shrimp right there you know what that means and you know we're hunting for sturgeon today so I've only caught one sturgeon in my whole entire life um, but I'm right in the area where I caught it so I'm hoping today I can find another one I've never caught a sturgeon on this particular kayak I caught one on my old outback so I'm hoping today I can put one on the old town so right now I'm just kind of motoring around the area going back and forth in shallow, out deep, kind of looking for a big concentration of marks that I feel like are sturgeon. And then we're gonna anchor up, toss our line in, hopefully catch us a dinosaur. If you're a fisherman of any amount of time, you know that there's a ton of different fishing gear to use. There's fishing rods, fishing reels, fishing lures, boats, kayaks, accessories. All that costs money, but if money is tough and you're looking to pay off some high interest loans or maybe even credit card debt, that's what the sponsor of today's video is here to help you out with. And the sponsor of today's video is Upstart. So whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a very clear payoff due. And when you apply to Upstart, they're committed to looking at the full picture, not just one number, aka your credit score. They're gonna look at your employment, they're gonna look at your income, and every all the other information that you provide on the loan application. So if you're interested to see what kind of rate you can get, you can apply online for any loan between one and $50,000 in just five minutes. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payment today when you go to upstart.com slash diehardfishing click on the link in the description. Once again, that's upstart.com slash diehardfishing, D-I-E-H-R-D-F-I-S-H-I-N-G. And don't forget to use the URL in the link description to let them know that I sent you there. One more time, upstart.com slash diehardfishing. All right, thank you to Upstart for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back on the sturgeon hunt. So what I'm looking for here, I'm not just looking for any marks, well, Obviously, I'm looking for some big marks because there's a bunch of different kinds of fish that live in these waters, but the sturgeon are the biggest. So the big, big marks, those should be sturgeon. But I'm not just looking for any marks. I'm looking for marks concentrated near the bottom. Because um, if you have seen a sturgeon before, their mouths are situated on the bottom of their head and they're basically suction feeders. So they're basically scooping up. There's a nice mark right here. Scooping up the food from the bottom. So if you see a mark in the middle of the water column, I'm no sturgeon professional, but I feel like that fish is probably not going to be looking for a meal. The ones that are be looking for food are the ones cruising on the bottom um, of the water column. So look for big marks concentrated near the bottom. Seems like there's a few fish, but I haven't really found a big concentration of them yet. Um, but once I do, then we're going to drop anchor and see what we can do. All right, a couple of good marks. I'm going to cut the motor. Anchor. Dropped anchor. We're stuck. Now let's do some sturgeon fishing. So if you're not familiar with sturgeon fishing, it's done stationary. So um, that's why we have that nice big anchor to keep us in one spot. The current's pushing pretty hard this way, so it looks like. I mean, it looks like we're moving, I guess, but we're actually not. We're just sitting in one spot. That way I can get my bait out. It'll drop down to the bottom and just sit in one spot where that sturgeon can come around and, and nail it. So for bait, we have these guys right here. That I showed you already. A little ghost shrimp. And I'm gonna put two of them on here. There's one. I just thread it through the back of the tail there and then through the body and that'll slide right up the hook there. So these ghost shrimp, have you ever seen them? They're, I don't know how to describe it, it's basically like a shrimp with, with a big claw. So that shell, it's not very strong so it would fall off pretty easily except we have a trick for that. And that's this right here, that's magic thread and also these right here, these are bait buttons. So, some people like prefer one or the other. I just use both. 
I don't think it hurts to bite anything. Okay, then I get my magic thread. And they call this magic thread, I don't know, it's basically just elastic string. And just wrap that up, that ghost shrimp up with this thread. Basically mummify it to that hook so that it's not gonna come off very easily. Pull that tight, that's what that looks like. And then I also have a couple of these guys right here. These are grass shrimp, so I'm just gonna thread. I'll just put two on, one big one, one little one. Okay, so we got the ghost shrimp on there. And then I'm gonna put my grass shrimp. These are pretty big ones for grass shrimp. Just like your normal shrimp. Put one of them on there. One. There's two. Just like that. Make sure they're on there good. And then I take my bait button. Kind of a long process, but it's worth it when you hook up. Just thread it off like that. So that bait, because this is a barbless hook, this whole bait thing can just slide right off. But the bait button, because of its, because how, uh, I guess, rubber it is, it really sticks to the hook. It doesn't slide off as easy as everything else. So that's the setup right there. Now we're gonna toss it in and hope for a big sturgeon. Once it hits the bottom, Snap the bail, and then we have these little balance beams, but I think the current's a little bit too strong right now. I'm not sure this balance beam's gonna work, but yeah, I'll just hold it. And then uh, sturgeon, they're notorious for really, really light taps. It's not a big pull like you would think with a huge fish. It's just a little tap, so once I feel a little tap, boom, I'm gonna set that hook, and hopefully we fish on. We'll see. I'm just fishing the afternoon session today, so I started at about one o'clock. I'm gonna fish all the way up until four, maybe later if I feel like I have a good chance to catch one if I stick it out, but probably one to four. It's about 2.30 right now, so another hour and a half. I'll, I'll put it this way, if I don't get any more bites for the next hour and a half, I'm gonna start heading in. But if something crazy starts happening between now and then, I might be sticking out a little longer. I'm curious for any of you sturgeon experts out there. So when the, like if the current is going this way, like are those fish going to be, like I assume their noses are going to be pointed into the current, but are they going to be actually swimming up current or are they going to be riding the current out? What do you guys think? I'm just curious if, I, if I'm catching these fish as they're coming up or if I'm catching them as they're going down. I would guess that they'd probably ride the currents back and forth. It wouldn't make sense for them to want to fight it so hard that they have to go up currents, but I could be wrong. Sturgeon fishing is so different. You're just kind of sitting here talking to you about things like that. Mm, nice, healthy mark right there. Decent size. thought I missed it. Uh, it's probably maybe a little striper. I'm not sure. I mean it feels heavy but I think it's because of the current. It's not because it's a big fish. Maybe it's a smaller sturgeon? I don't know. Who knows? When I set the hook the first time I thought I had missed it. Oh, 
Well, it's a sturgeon. It's not the size that we're looking for. All right, that's a good start. We'll take it. It's only the stur second sturgeon I've ever caught in my life. So, I don't know what the best way to hold him is, but I don't really want to hold him too much because those scales, they look like scales on the side of the fish. Those are super sharp. And I'll tell you why that affects our setup here in a second here. But yeah, right there, super sharp. That'll tear up your hand really quick. And the ones on the bottom actually have points on them and top too. So I don't want to hold them out of the water too long. There you go, sturgeon. First fish of the day, target species acquired. Now we're looking for something a little bit bigger. Ready to release. Thanks for playing, little guy. We did it. I'm not sure what happened there, because when I first set the hook, I didn't feel anything. I'm not sure if either he was there, but like swimming towards me, or maybe when I set the hook, he wasn't there. I left it there for a little bit longer and he came back and grabbed it, maybe? I don't know. But anyways, worked out in our favor. That was alluding to that side of the fish, how they're, they're, they're called scoots, or at least that's what I think they're called. I don't know if that's a scientific term or just the uh, thing that everyone calls them, but those things on the side, they're like half bone, half scale, I don't really know, um, but they're super sharp and they even have points on them. Um, so that is why we have to use really heavy line here. So see like right here, it's, it's nicked up a little bit. You probably can't tell there, but um, if I was using lighter line, maybe like 20 or 30, that fish might have broken right through there. When you're fighting the fish, just in case that tail swings around and whaps your line, that's why I have about, like with the leader and top shot in total, I have about seven feet of this heavy, you know, abrasion resistant line. Let's get another bait down. It seemed like the go shrimp and grab shrimp combo was working. Let's see if we can get another one. I just caught one small one. Uh, no, sturgeon. sturgeon. Yeah. No, no keepers though. Um, about one. Yeah. Sturgeon. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Interesting. I think that's. I thought they were gonna ask me for my uh, sturgeon card. So if you're sturgeon fishing, you need a your regular fishing license, and you also need a second piece of um, licensing or whatever. It's called a sturgeon card, um, and you're allowed three sturgeon per year, one per day, and they have to be between 40 and 60 inches uh, from the tip of the nose to the fork of the tail, not the tip of the tail, the fork, which is like the inner, I don't know how to describe it, but straight down the middle of the fish, basically, to that inside of the, uh, fin. So yeah, I thought they were going to ask me for my sturgeon card and everything, but I think it's actually not part of fishing game. I think they're just doing like a survey to see kind of what, what fish are out there. They ask you where you're from. I'm not really sure why that matters, but maybe they want to see how far people are traveling to catch these fish. So where you're from, how long you've been fishing, and then what fish you've caught. So um, I caught one undersized sturgeon not too long ago, just like five minutes ago. And then I gave my zip code and I told them what I'm targeting. So I'm targeting sturgeon. I think that also helps. Uh, like obviously if there's striper here uh, or whatever else, I'm not necessarily targeting those fish. So they could still be here even though I haven't caught any. But sturgeon is what I'm targeting. They gather all that data and I'm sure there's a huge formula that they use. Uh, but all that will in turn give them an idea of how many fish are here, what size fish are here, stuff like that. So. Yeah, you see them out on the water every once in a while. Pretty excited I caught one. Surgeon is definitely not my specialty, so anytime I can get, you know, even if it's an undersize, I feel like that's a win for me. So anyways, day's not over. Hopefully there's more bigger fish, maybe even a slot fish if I'm lucky. Hey, maybe even oversized if I'm lucky. You guys saw that, but 
As I'm pulling the anchor, I just saw one jump right back there. Alright, drop an anchor. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Did never find that keeper, but we did catch sturgeon. And in my opinion, anytime you catch sturgeon, it's a good day. But one more thing, one more announcement. I'm going to start selling these rod covers right here. This is my new merch that I'm selling. It's got my name on there. It's like orange and gray, kind of like woven together. That's the color. And they're designed for eight foot casting rods. So they won't work on a spinning rod. Um, but they will work on any conventional rod, like rods with the reels you see like this. That's a conventional reel. And basically, it's because the eyes are a lot smaller on these conventional rods. As long as your rod is eight feet or below, or even eight and a half. This is an eight and a half right here, and it fits just fine. Um, it covers all the eyes, which is really what it's there for. And so, you've never seen them before. Basically, you just slide this over the, over the rod like this. One end's got the end on it like that. It's taped together. And the other end, it's open. Slide it right on the rod like that. And then all your eyes are covered, protected, and you're looking good when you get to the boat ramp. And the reason you don't want a nick in your eyes is because once once that one of those is nicked and the, the line rubs against it, that's gonna be fraying up the line every time it goes across. So really important, keep your stuff uh, safe and secure with the dark fishing. Rod sleeve. This is a design for an eight foot rod, um, but if you want to shrink it down for like a seven or seven and a half, probably even six, you could, well, one, you can just cut it or you can even just push it in like this and shorten it down like that. So that's probably good for like a seven foot rod. But um, yeah, I'd say anywhere from like an eight and a half to a seven foot rod, uh, conventional rod or ideal. Hopefully, if it all goes well, I can carry some different sizes. I'll carry some bigger ones for spinning rods, different lengths for to fit in different rods. Uh, but it's kind of just like a test run. If you're interested, check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. Like I said, it's a test run. I'll have them for sale there. And if all goes well, we'll carry more. More sizes, more shapes, more colors. Thank you again to Upstart for sponsoring today's video. And um, yeah, it's fun to get back out on the kayak. I haven't been out here in a while. Nice to catch a nice fish. And we headed home. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.